in one of those conversations during the Pink Cloud time, I said um, a series of things to him, including that he had never found me interesting. And uh, and it was cathartic to say all these things to him. Um, I went home, I told my husband, uh, why do I feel terrible? It should feel so good to unburden myself and get all this off my chest and say these things. And he said, oh, it's because when you said them, he didn't tell you you were wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you write also about your father's essay that ran in the New Yorker shortly after his diagnosis, The Art of Dying. And you write about having been to the doctor with him. It's you and your mom and your dad and the doctor delivers the news and says, do you have any questions? And you're thinking, you know, this is going to be how much time and blah, blah. And his first and really only question is, can I still write? And this essay comes out and once again, you find yourself getting calls and emails about what a genius your father is, and how lucky you must be, and all of these presumptuous things that people say. Um, but in the first draft, you write, you know, that your father had not mentioned you, your your child, your husband, your stepson, and you made a note of this to him. And uh, I also the first draft was twenty one thousand words long. <laughs> <laughs> Cut down to nine thousand. Um, and you write, a paragraph about me made it into the final. Mm -hmm. My father took what I told him that day in the apartment that I always felt he never found me interesting and used it in his story. Quote, my daughter Ada has told me that she spent years in her childhood trying to interest me. I hadn't noticed. She was 16 when I got sober. She said, let's see if I get this straight. Now you want to be my dad. It took a lot of time and change and is still underway. I don't know if it's a consolation prize for Ada or what it is that she turned out to be fantastically interesting. Mm. He also said in the story something I'd always felt but never heard him articulate. I think off and on about people I love, but I think about writing all the time. Mm. That is a, a level of, I mean, you have to give it to him. Like, he's honest. <laughs> yeah. He's brutally honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, so when you read in this sort of, this paragraph, you know, he takes your editorial note, and then he writes maybe something he would never be able to say, which is that I find you fantastically interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but, and it, but just to speak to the thing about being so honest, which is, it's so true. And um, this other writer we know, um, Abba Kaler, who also writes under Karen Abbott, um, she told me this thing at one point about how w women, especially, who want to create anything, need to be 10% more narcissistic. She said, yes. if you just take however you feel and you just try to turn it up a little bit, um, because you need that kind of confidence and that kind of swagger, for lack of a better word, um, to, to get anything done, to actually put your own voice out in the world. And, and, and he did model that for me as an, <laughs> as an adult. I mean, I, you know, to, to some... I would say more than 10%. Mm -hmm. At what point did this book take the shape of its final form? When you had to abandon, you write about it at, a, at a certain point, you say to a friend of yours, the Frank O'Hara book is dead. The idea is dead. At what point in the process did you realize it? Did you accept it? Because those are two completely different things. And then figure out what this book really is. Uh, you know, I, I took notes during that phone call. I will say my husband was really good. He, he was like, he was like, no, it's great. It's great that this happened. It's wonderful. And it, like you said, it did take a little while for that to actually sink in. This was a great gift that she had given me. And then at that point, I could take all of these other notes I had about things that had been happening and that that could be the book. The book could be about writing the book and about all the things I figured out while I was doing it. So it was not too far after that I realized that's what I needed to do. But yeah, and then it took a, took a little while to just to get it, get it down and, and move things around and shape it. And how long did it take you? Did it just sort of come out of well, you? Well, fortunately there was a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so I was locked in my house for, um, and, and I had to listen to the tapes and transcribe them because I, you know, that was, that was how I decided to structure my days. They're about 40 hours and every day I would do an hour and then try to write through an afternoon. So it was about a couple, it was like a couple months of where it was actually putting it together. But so two years or two months, depending on how you count it. And then talk to me about 
you know, you, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but how you come to your ending, um, which is really beautifully done, and harks back to your childhood, and a very pure exchange with your dad. It's almost very Frank O'Hara-like, like what you would imagine Frank would be like with a little child, you know. Um, how did you, you know, you, I, would, I would imagine you have to come to that ending, not just intellectually, but emotionally before you can even write it. There were, so, so I show up on various ones of the tapes, um, and at one point when I'm one, at one point when I'm two, and some of them are rather fraught, where my father says things like, thinks I'm saying there are people in the tape recorder, he's like, there are no people in the tape recorder, I'm like, I know, I'm like one and a half, I'm like, I know there's no people in the tape recorder, um, I'm trying to say play it back, but he's not understanding me. But while I was looking through all that, um, or listening to all those tapes, there was this one moment, and I just kept thinking about it over and over again, this one moment where we were singing together, and it was so, it was so pure, it was so sweet, it was so, you know, Frank O'Hara-ish, and, uh, and I, you know, I couldn't get out of my head that sound. Mm. Well, it's an incredible book. It's so beautifully written. I, as I've said to you before, I think it's the best thing you've ever written, and you write wonderfully. Um, and I think we should maybe, any questions? Open it up. How about your mom? Mm. <laughs> she also loves the book. <laughs> she's very happy. That's I think a good answer. She's so. a little nervous, I think, that she's going to get her own one day. <laughs> <laughs> she's begun acting very nice to me. <laughs> so I highly recommend writing writing a memoir about somebody so that everybody else will be, you know, on notice and on best behavior. <laughs> So I'm curious if Maureen had completely changed character and given you permission to um, write the book. I mean, as somebody who knew what was going to happen, it was interesting reading it to uh -huh. that point. Um, but how did how did you think the how did you envision the book looking? Because you know, there's the Brad Gooch biography, right. which is very fo I think too focused on anecdote and mm -hmm. love affairs and everything. And there's Joe Lasser's book that takes poems and plays off of them and everything. How did you see the O'Hara book that you had in your mind? I thought it was going to be, um, I, I thought I would talk a little bit about my my father's experience of him and just sort of um, why he was so special, why people loved him so much. That's what I thought. I, I mean, I think the, the Brad Beach book is so, is so thorough. I mean, the stuff he found, especially the childhood, it's like amazing to me. Um, and the Jill Lasser one is, is fun, right? It's like, he takes different poems and he writes the stories behind the poems but I thought mine would really capture like the spirit of things so it would be it would be all the biographical things you need to have but I really thought I would I would interview all the people who, who knew him um, who were still alive and they could reflect back on him um, from now I mean I, I thought it would be a little bit like my book St. Marx is Dead that came out in 2015 that was a history of the street I grew up on in the East Village so I thought it would be like a history but also would have kind of a a theme to it, which was, look how wonderful Frank O'Hara is and how spiritually um, profound he is. So I think it would I think it would have been a pretty good book, um, but I think this book is broader. This book is about, it's about more, it's kind of about the ultimate unknowability of people mm -hmm. and um, about what you do with a parent who's imperfect, mm -hmm. trying to like love people through their imperfection. Uh, and I think it's also about confidence and especially maybe as a, as a writer or as a creative person trying to, where do you find it? Anybody else have any questions? One thing I will say is I've been on book tour for the last couple weeks and, um, and often the Q&A does involve at least a couple people sharing details about their fraught relationship with <laughs> one or the other parent, <laughs> which I am totally here for and have been enjoying. So, you know, <laughs> stories of woe, they are welcome to, uh, you can t you can also find me after. <laughs> well, I have a question. Yes. There's a part in the book I remember, it must be why women can't sleep, uh -huh. where that comes out and gets big success and you're at the table with your father and maybe talking about the success of something he wrote and you're like, well, my book is number whatever it is on the on the charts. Uh -huh. um, now that the book is out and you're doing this tour and because, you know, we're still in a pandemic, people are seeing each other more openly. Um, has he talked to you or have you talked to him about the success of this book? 
or is it something that you're just not discussing? Um, he, he, so he, the New York Times called him for an interview. Okay. Um, which made me a little nervous, right? Uh -huh. it, was, it was a profile. <laughs> Once again, wrote the book thinking he would never read it. Yeah. Um, definitely did not think the New York Times would call him and say, what did you think about the, the, the book? book. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he said, it's not Mommy Dearest. Which I appreciate it. Um, he also said to the reporter, I've never read anything like it, have you? Mm. Which I thought was so beautiful, yeah. elegantly phrased. I mean, Absolutely. a very O'Hara kind of way to, way to say it. Yeah. Um, really lovely. And so that's enough. Like, he doesn't also have to, like, throw me yeah, a party or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, he did, I, um, my, my husband threw me a party. Yeah. Uh, right there. He threw me a great book party. And, uh, and at the book party, we asked my father to read a poem right. of his, and he mm -hmm. did. And he seemed to actually really enjoy it. Participating in that way, Wonderful. but no, I'm not sending him daily sales. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was there. I I could. I thought that is very generous that you asked him to read a poem of his. Oh, that's really. I thought it was nice of him to do it. I mean, it was. I, okay, so you know a lot about my father. <laughs> I don't need to. Um, but my father would have presumed he was going to read a poem, you know, or take the mic. Or, and so hearing that you offered that to him is somehow, I don't know, it feels as if you, I don't know if you would have done that always, or if that was something that you evolved into. Yeah, I think it was, you know, maybe it was coming from a place of, of strength, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, I, mm -hmm. I had, I had a couple hundred of my closest friends and mm -hmm. my wonderful editor and, you know, people around. So it was like, I could definitely be like, come on, you do something, you know, like, and it, and it felt like it was, it was on, it was my party. And, and if he was doing something there for me and that felt good. Yes. Follow up. Um, <laughs> the title. Oh yeah. I, I spend a lot of time, I've read the book twice and I, I feel 